it different? I, obviously, you come from boxing culture. You guys are a little more, more polished. You've been through this, but is it different going against the MMA culture? Like you know, talking to MMA guys. Um, it's different in that. Um, well, one thing uh, I don't. I don't know if Arnold's ever been part of press conferences to this degree. You know, because he doesn't know how to handle himself. Like both times I've had a press conference with him, he got up, he said nothing. Then I got up there and he kept talking. You know what I'm saying? So, like you know, and I get it. Sometimes you want to have rebuttals here and there, but. He didn't have a word to say every time, and then every time he wouldn't let. Every time I got up there, he wouldn't let me speak. You know, he always had something to say. So, so I don't. I mean, I've been through this. I kind of know how it goes. Um, I don't think Artem. I, I think for Artem, this is all new to him. This is the biggest fight of his career. Uh, this is the biggest money fight of his career. And uh, and uh, you see what he said. I want the money. See, I need the money. You see what he said. So at the end of the day, the truth came out when we when we, when we were when we were stressing each other face to face. Uh, but ultimately. Um, um, I don't know. It's uh, it's a press conference. I've been through many of them, you know. Paul, you've been a showman from the beginning of your career. You were flashy, flamboyant. Then you tuned it down. You became the best boxing an uh, analyst on Showtime. Now you revert it back to the old Pauli Malinaji. Are you that? Um, angry at him that, and dislike towards him that you went back to the old Pauli Malinaji? I'm, I'm a guy who I'm a guy who wears my heart on my sleeve. You know, I'm uh, I'm, I'm somebody. I will show you who I am, um, and I, I don't need to hide it. You know, and and so in, in that way, if I have a dislike for you, I don't know how to be fake towards you, and if I have a liking for you, I don't know how to be fake towards you. You know, like I'm usually a polite guy. I think that most people that meet me and, and even have come up to me for autographs, have come up and met me, I I I, I, I don't typically. Uh, uh, I'm not typically rude to most people, you know what I'm saying? When I meet them, when I talk to them, uh, sometimes I may be in a rush, but other than that, I'm not typically rude, you know? So so I, I think people that have met me would would, 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 test, would, would, would testify to this, you know? But but ultimately, like, like I said, you can't take my kindness for weakness either, you know? Like, if you come at me the way this guy came at me, we, well, you're lying about me, and you're, and you're saying certain things, and that whole team did that, but but obviously only he's the one that stepped up and fight and, and is fighting me. But the whole team of that, you know, you gotta come see me. At the end of the day, that's why people say, oh, why do you bother Khan or this and that? Oh, Khan promised you guys a, a full video two years ago. Why don't you guys bother Khan? I don't need, I shouldn't need to bother Khan. I know what happened in this barn. But but the fact that you guys keep talking about it and, and, and talking about it in a way where where you guys haven't even seen the full shit, but you talk like you have, like, why don't you guys go bother the guy? You know what I mean? I shouldn't have to bother the guy. You know what I mean? But but ultimately, like I said, until you, and once you've done that and you've lied and you've done that you, and you've put me in a bad light, you gotta come see me, bro, because it's it's a lie. You know what I mean? If it's the truth, I say, you know what? Oh man, you know what? I got myself into that. I gotta live with it. I gotta earn it. But but when it's a lie, cause you gotta you gotta come see me, bro. Now now it's now it's a man to man thing. You know what I mean? So 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 this guy's gonna come see me Saturday, and we'll see you after that. What would be your satisfaction in earning victory for this fight? Um, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, of course. You want to put a hurting on him. You want to see blood. Uh, you want to you know, do all that. But you know, and, and then just hear him talk. Hear him say the things he's saying about like how he wants to hurt me and he's gonna punch holes in my head and, and he's talking about my parents and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I come from a broken family as it is. I, uh, you know, it, it starts to irk you more. But of course, he's already kind of reached the boiling point where, where I don't need any more motivation. You know. But of course, there's some of the things he says almost push you to, to the tipping point, right? That's why he's already been slapped and spit on before. You know, uh, I didn't do that today out of kindness on my heart because believe me, even when we were on the, when we were next to each other, he was sitting right there. I could have hit him with a backhand. And I thought about it, but I said, you know what? Let me let him live tonight. You know? You do this for a living. You break down fighters, yeah. so it was easy to break down Artem's yeah. tape if you did watch it. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I, I couldn't watch a lot of it because because he's getting looks that he's that are he, in, in, that are not even close to the looks I give. So it's hard for me to gauge how he's going to react to my looks and, and my and my punches and whatnot. I, I kind of get it. I got, I've watched it a couple of times, but it, it's one of those things where. You're like a fastball hitter, and you're getting ready for a knuckleball, a knuckleball pitcher, you know. And so, so you, you overthink it, you're gonna end up sucking yourself out. Artem is a guy who, when you watch him, it looks like he can't fight for shit. He really, you know, he, and he's falling over himself, and he's throwing haymakers and whatnot. But of course, it's the timing is so off that it could throw you off if you try to, uh, uh, you try to approach it in a in a, in a in a complicated way. So you have to take a very simple approach. But you also have to understand, as I watch him. He's not getting looks that I'm gonna give. He's not getting any. So I don't know what looks he's gonna return to me based on the looks I get. And so, therefore, it couldn't make anything I'm watching irrelevant because because it, it could change the entire dynamic of the looks he gives me when we're fighting. Or he may not give me looks. He may he just rush me, right? I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I do think that he wants to get in the clinch and try to grab and hit me, hold and hit me, right? So, so he may not even give me any looks at all. So I gotta be ready for a couple of different things. Um, and that's how I, I broke him down. You know, I gotta be ready for a couple of different things. Speaking of your incredible analyst side and 
crossover fights, uh, big fight in the news. Justin Bieber versus Tom Cruise. Who wins that fight? Who? What? Justin Bieber versus Tom Cruise. <laughs> Come on, man. I was told to, to respect my elders, you know what I'm saying? So Conor McGregor is a piece of shit. He obviously wasn't taught that. So you don't even try to make that Bieber and Tom Cruise fight because Cruise is old enough to be like his grandfather, you know what I'm saying? Like, So so you don't even talk about that fight. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Does, does Tom have enough in the tank to beat the Biebs? <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not going to give up on this one. No. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> All right, all, fight. all right, youth, youth beats age. So you got Bieber. <laughs> I got Bieber. Yeah. Respect. Thank but you I don't. Paul. But I don't want to see them fight. Hey, Paulie, okay. this is your show. This is your show. How do you feel being the main event? The main event. The man. The the, the well, this everybody. Is one of the main reasons too. You know what I mean? It's, obviously, I don't like Artem, but this was the thing where I said, when it was offered to me, I said, in boxing, I'll have to build back to this, and I probably don't have the ability anymore in boxing at a world class level to build back to this level. You know, but you throw me, trust me, right into this and. I thought I'm at this level right away, in a, in a fight that's very winnable. I said, and I guess a guy I don't like. I said, well, I know this is motivation, and then the money was good, so I'm like, motivation, is motivation, is motivation. I think I got enough motivation to do this. And then when we started going, I was like actually looking forward to getting up in the morning. I was, I was, I was going to sleep early. Bro, I, go to, I don't go to sleep at night sometimes, bro. You know what I mean? I like to go out. I like to hang out. I like to just chill and talk, whatever. Like, I'm like a night owl. You know, like I, I was wanting to go to sleep at night because I wanted to train good the next day. You know what I mean? Like it was, it changed my my perspective at least for a training camp. And I didn't know if I had that mentality in me yet, uh, uh, still. And, and I did. And, and and I not only did I, but I, I didn't mind it either. You know. And so it, so it's been good. And, and that's why. It's, and one of the reasons was because like you said this is my show are you taking are you taking artem lightly good question right i sound like i am right yeah no 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 100 percent you good good observation um no i'm not i'm not because i do think there's risk factors in this fight and i and, and there, there the risk factors are the unknown you know there is the unknown for myself you know there's the the clinch and whatnot and and i, I know he's overplaying the whole clinch because to get me in the clinch you have to have to you actually have to get to me and so to close the gap on me is not as easy not that easy and he knows that also he's got two left feet so closing the gap is even harder for a guy like that um he doesn't, doesn't have the greatest footwork but of course do I not think about it? Of course I think about it. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but I don't think about it as much as he'd like me to think about it. But of course, it keeps me from taking a fight lightly because there is the unknown there. You know what I'm saying? Also, when you ring the bell, you in a boxing match, you get to walk to center. You kind of get, you kind of get into your zone as you, uh, during that that initial three, few steps you take the center ring. Right here, you may have to fight right off the jump, or you may have to take a step back off the jump. You know what I'm saying? So it depends. So, so of course, there's there's reasons to not take anything lightly in this sport, especially when you haven't taken part in it, and I haven't taken part in it. So, so I, I I've been fully focused and and, fu and I'm fully addressing all the possibilities as well. No matter how much the trash talk I, I talk, it's not out of respect for Artem. For me, it's out of respect for the sport. Yeah. Well, you're talking about you're talking about motivation that you found your motivation finally for this fight but you were also kind of non-committal of whether you wanted to do it again yeah. is that part of just to see how it feels afterwards or yeah, to see yeah. maybe what comes out well yeah else? Because, yeah because every fight has an individual motivation you know so you know uh i found a great motivation for this fight there were several things several things motivated motivated me for this fight but of course you know you've got to find that motivation all over again for the next fight you know and then i ideally I could see myself doing it again, but but I can't. I don't want to promise it, and then and suddenly I don't do it again. You know, or I don't want to say I don't do it again, and then I do it again. You know, so so you know, I I, I take it. I take it. We'll see how Saturday uh, feels. We'll see how it feels on Saturday, and then and then from there, you know, I'll probably still will make a decision. I probably still will kind of take some chill time for the summer, and then figure it out later. Is you have to okay, Amy? Showtime's always okay. I, I, I no, do they have to okay? You have to get it. Their permission to come fight into. Nah, no, nah. no. I, I was I was an active fighter when I started fighting. When I started working at Showtime, so I, I'm allowed to be an active fighter if I choose to be. Do you talk about, about unknowns? Do I see this fight going a distance? Yeah. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I, if if, he, if it goes a distance, he's gonna get very bloody. He's gonna he's gonna take a lot of shots. You talk about if it goes a distance. I'll give him credit. Talk about unknowns. One that one unknowns. I feel like he keeps talking about your hands. That you don't have the hand the durability. Can you talk about that? Do you think that's going to be a, a factor, or something yeah, you don't I mean, know? I've, I've had hand-on-hand uh, hand operations, but I haven't had one in 10 years. You know, actually 11 years. My last hand operation. So my hands have been healthier uh, the second part of my career. You know, uh, so but I also think. Artem needs to hold on to certain things in order to give himself confidence. Artem, no, dude, this at the end of the day what, you, what, you, what you're dealing with here. This is a guy who's used to losing. Okay, He's used to losing, and, and then the psychology of losing becomes a part of you. You're, you're, you don't think twice about like the kind of tough opposition. Hey, yeah, if we lose, we lose. We just fight. Because we lose, we, we're used to losing already, right? That's how, that, that's how somebody like him, that's how the, the subtle psychology starts to take place. So, so for Artem, 
he needs he needs some also to give himself some subtle confidence. He needs to reach out for things like oh his hands. His hands are hurt, been hurt. You know he doesn't have a lot of knockout power. Even though with bare hands, I mean come on, bro. Every pro boxer and with bare hands is a puncher. Um, and then you know he's 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 trying to give himself confidence in any way possible because you know he, he needs to. You know he he doesn't have he, he's, he's got a grasp for straws at the end of the day. And and I think ultimately um, um, it's it's more of a it's more of a. a of a knock on him than it is a knock on me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't I don't feel like we have to uh, grasp for anything or, or wor over worry too much. Yes, we've had hand issues. Yes, there are issues in general with every fighter at certain points or another, right? I mean, that's just what happens. But when you don't really think about that, you know, like I always try to think about my opponent, is, he's going to bring the best version of him possible, you know, on Saturday, on Saturday night or whatever night I'm fighting, you know, regardless of how much trash talk I think, if I approach it that way, I can't take my opponent lightly, you know what I'm saying, so Saturday night, whatever the best version of, of Artemis, he's gonna, he's, he's, I, I feel like he's going to bring it, I don't think there's a best version, I think there's a tough version, you know, like I think Artem will be extra motivated and be tough on Saturday night, but I don't think he's going to suddenly come up with, pop up with skills that he hadn't shown us before, you know, but of course, like we talked about before, there is the unknown that you, that you try to prepare for and, uh, and and you get yourself ready but he's grasping for, he's grasping for straws at the end of the day he's grasping for straws because ultimately when you've lost like this constantly and repetitively in your career you know who's gonna whoop your ass and, and Saturday night he knows he's gonna he knows he's gonna get his ass whooped Saturday night he's just talking a good game because he wants to sell pay-per-views so he can get he can make his biggest purse yet Holly touching on the, the hand issue uh, I know a lot of MMA fans feel it's gonna be a big factor in the fight you put your piece on it but do you think they're overlooking the amateur experience you have, the world championship experience you've had at a different level in terms of striking coming into this fight? Um, I'll be honest with you. If you're, if they're MMA fans, the only thing they know about me is what Connor and Artem have talked. To. So, and Connor and Honor is just Artem has talked a bunch of bullshit. So, so you know, if they're just, if they don't actually watch boxing or follow boxing or actually watch my fights or follow my career, the conclusions they can, they come to are really just lying to themselves. And and they're gonna make the bookies a lot of money this weekend. You know what I mean? Because because you know I'm sure that plus money on Artem Lobov looks really tempting to them if they think that I'm that limited. You know, so so I, the, the, a big winner this weekend is gonna be the bookies too. You know, if, if that's really the case. But I don't really worry about who's underestimating me or not because ultimately praise doesn't win you fights and criticism doesn't win you fights. You are yourself, your fists, your brains, they win you fights. Any pressure, you're representing the whole boxing community and they, they put it as MMA versus boxing. You're representing boxing all the way, he's representing mixed martial arts. Any pressure um, if you were to, something wants to happen, something crazy versus you or Zardo? Um, I, I, don't, I don't feel pressure because um, I think people have made it boxing versus MMA. I have a lot of friends who are MMA fighters. I have a lot of fighter, friends who are obviously boxers. You know, I come from boxing and I always give my love to boxing. But of course, I also have a lot of friends who are MMA fighters as well. So, so we're good MMA fighters. So, so I, if I put it as an MMA versus boxing thing, I, it would kind of be disrespecting my friends on that side too. So, so I don't really make it at that. I, it's more of a personal situation, but it's very, very personal. You know, like like when you, when you disguise it as poly spit and poly uh, poly slap, then that's very disrespectful. You're only taking it, you're taking it completely out of context you know there would there's a reason he's getting spit on and, sm and smacked and there's a reason he would get it even worse if I if I could have you know what I'm saying and the reason Saturday's gonna get it worse you know there's it's not it's it, it's a personal issue and and, and 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 when you when you don't take it out of context I, I would assume it's understandable after, after after all this time in the MMA world a little bit like what do you think of the MMA fan base after all these after all this time um it's a weird culture yeah I don't know it's a weird culture they're they're uh, they're more they're, they remind me of wrestling fans, except that they're in a combat sport that's real. It's not staged, you know. But they remind me of wrestling fans, you know. Um, they're uh, they're they're very cartoonish, very out there, you know. And again, I blame it on what I said last month. I blame it on MMA fighters don't die because when you when your when your fighters die, your fan base has a, a bit of a more smart thinking the way they talk. MMA, MMA fans talk the way the fighters talk about kill this guy and and do this and fighting bears and whatever the hell else they, you guys talk about. But ultimately. You know, you're going to see your fighter in a couple of months, and you're going to see a fighter in the next week attending another fight. In boxing, you don't have that promise. In boxing, our favorite fighters get killed sometimes, to wind up in coma sometimes. So, so I think there's a reason why the, the boxing fan is more domesticated and the MMA fan is more uh, rough around the edges. But it's fine. It's, it's a different culture. But um, the difference with wrestling and MMA is wrestling's is, is con there's a contract already out there with a result already stipulated, and there's a script. MMA fights are not stipulated and scripted. But like I said, guys at least are coming out safe and sound. And that's a positive.